Hi, it's Dwyer. It's early in the week. It's Veterans Day, November 11th. They haven't even played the Monday night football game yet from the current NFL week. Well, with your help, let's try to beat the casinos, right? Let's try to grab some of these early games. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now here are the early games that I like. We're grabbing early lines before people start chasing spreads. I like the Miami Dolphins at home getting five and a half points over the Buffalo Bills. Right? That's Miami at home getting five and a half points. Understand, Miami has won two games in a row. The defense is peaking. They have not given up more than 321 total yards in either of the last two games. Also, Buffalo's defense isn't peaking. Buffalo lost to Cleveland last week. They gave up 24 first downs to a struggling Cleveland Brown team. Now, Buffalo on offense has not had more than 21st downs in any game after week four. Right? So to me, Buffalo's offense is challenged. Right? They're on the road against a Miami team that's actually better than advertised. I like Miami getting five and a half points this week. Right? Next, I like Houston getting four and a half points on the road at Baltimore. Now what I'm going to say is one man's opinion. I understand many of you will disagree with me. Houston has had the harder schedule. Houston has the better defense. Even without J.J. Watt. Houston, in my opinion, has the better quarterback. Right? I know Lamar Jackson is off to a great start this year. I'm just telling you in terms of being able to do it all, and that includes operate from the pocket. Deshaun Watson is an elite quarterback. Houston is coming off of a bye. They've had a full and complete opportunity to study the Baltimore Ravens. Right? Houston also is hotter than people realize. They've won four of their last five games. Right? And Houston's rushing attack was great against Jacksonville. They gained 216 yards on the ground. Right? Um, let me just say the Baltimore Cincinnati game, I believe you need to take that a little bit with a grain of salt because, first off, the win was over Cincinnati. Not an elite team. Cincinnati compounded that by turning over the ball three times. Right? It's, it's bad enough that the team's not elite and the team has some serious injuries, right? A.J. Green and stuff like that. But then the team goes out there and turns over the ball. Let me say, too, that Baltimore might be overlooking this game because after it they play the Rams in LA then they play the Niners right so Baltimore we'll see how focused they are for this Houston team coming off of a bye um, let me also say too Cincinnati did have 157 rushing yards against Baltimore now given that Houston just had a great rushing game against Jacksonville before their bye, right? Um, that seems to be a recipe for disaster to me, right? So I like Houston. You're getting four and a half points. Granted, it's on the road. It's in Baltimore. But I'm, I'm taking the Texans. Finally, right now, this line strikes me as odd. The Pittsburgh Steelers are actually underdogs against the struggling Cleveland Browns, right? You're getting two and a half points for Pittsburgh going to Cleveland. I like Pittsburgh getting the two and a half points. 
let me just say Cleveland only has one win in their last five games. Think about that. Right? When I say struggling, I mean struggling. Let me also say, too, there's a huge coaching edge here. Right? Mike Tomlin has been to multiple Super Bowls. Understand, Mike Tomlin not only hasn't been below 500 in any year as a head coach in the National Football League, believe it or not, this year without Big Ben, franchise quarterback, he's above 500. <laughs> right? So Mike Tomlin is an A-lister among coaches in the National Football League. By contrast, Freddie Kitchens, first-year head coach. His team right now has a losing record. Understand, the over-under in terms of wins for the Cleveland Browns at the start of the year was nine. Right? Cleveland, quite frankly, has been underachieving. Pittsburgh, by contrast, has won four games in a row. Also, let's look closely at Pittsburgh. Now, granted, they started the year losing games, but they only lost to Seattle by two. I'm just naming teams with winning records that they've lost to. They lost to San Francisco, a team that's still unbeaten. The Monday night game has not yet been played by four in San Francisco. Right? And they lost to Baltimore by three. In other words, before their run, right, which is currently at four games. When the Steelers lost games, often it was close, right? Four points or less to teams with winning records or unbeaten records in the case of the 49ers. So all I can say is the Steelers, to me, shouldn't be getting any points playing the Cleveland Browns. You mean to tell me early in the week I'm getting two and a half points? <laughs> Sign me up. I'll take it. Let me also say too. I know when Big Ben went down, we thought, well, at least I thought, wow, Steelers are going to have a rough go of it this year. Right? They're going to have a struggle making the playoffs. Well, guess what, folks? They're five and four right now. <laughs> Whatever the injuries and I know Connor's banged up, the Steelers have problems, whatever the injuries. The Steelers are in the playoff hunt right now. Right? They need to win this game. They're not playing out the string. They're actually trying to make the playoffs. I like the Steelers here getting two and a half points. Let me point out that Kareem Hunt is back for the Browns. Nick Chubb has been playing excellent ball. Cleveland did have 147 rushing yards against the Bills. Right? Also, Pittsburgh, the Steelers, will be Cleveland's second straight home game. In other words, you know, teams like home cooking, you really feel at home when you've been at home for a while. Right? Also, Pittsburgh hasn't had more than 90 rushing yards in either of the last two games. So, there are some things to be said for Cleveland. But, let me say this. Let me close with this. The Steelers just shut down the Ram offense. That Steeler defense is an elite defense that puts pressure on the quarterback. Baker Mayfield, at the end of the day, is a second-year starter. Right? He's still a young guy. I like the Steelers as an underdog here getting two and a half points. That's how I see it. Here's where you come in. If you have comments on these games or if any of these other early lines intrigue you and you want to talk about it here in the comment section of this video, I encourage you to do so. Let's get a jump on the casino. I'll try to also make a late in the week video if there are any line moves that I believe have created value or if, and this happens often in the NFL, there's any injury news that creates value. Someone listed as doubtful, right? Someone listed as out, someone not practicing during the week. Anyway, that's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.